coming up. It's the most amazing experience. Cockroaches have the same effect. Dry, I was thinking. Yes, dry as a biscuit. Entertain. Jazz hands. Articulating my thought process. I'm desperate to do it myself now. Super exciting. I hope the badger doesn't dig them up and eat them. We've sat through enough. I love that. Do that again and you're inside. Now you know that I know that's true. That felt painful. I love a kitten. Which may be slightly easier for you than me. What are we trying to do? We're trying to tell a story to somebody. And now, enjoy the podcast. How do you say that? How do you say that? How do you say that? How How do do you you say say that? that? Hello and welcome to today's episode of How Do You Say That? Sponsored by BritishVoiceOver.co.uk. It's the show dedicated to anyone who's ever had to read a script out loud in front of a microphone. And here is my co-host, Mark Rice. Hello. 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 And his fun fact is that he's just started a new growing adventure for 2024. He's just planted... Yes. I'm going to mispronounce this because I'm not a gardener. Do you want me to do it for you? Yeah, go on. Allium bulbs. I thought it was allium. Alliums. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've never, I've never tried growing them before. They, they are, they grow on a very long stem, and they've got, they've got a, a, a large, like puffball, um, round. If you imagine mm. a dandelion clock, yes. but, uh, but much, much bigger and purple. It's a bit like that, and they're lovely. And I haven't ever tried growing them before, and I've just planted the bulb. Well, there you go. Uh, well, my co-host is Sam Boffin, and this morning, mm. yes, this morning, she went yes. to a ballet bar class for the first time since she was about I ten. Wow! <laughs> I was very why? excited. In fact, I've been on tiptoes in the booth. Um, <laughs> why? Because I felt I needed to stretch more, and oh. a ballet bar class gives me the opportunity to do that. Not yoga then? Not yoga, no. No, I was in first position, second position. (laughs) I even remembered fifth. I was very impressed with myself. Excellent. Well done. (laughs) And of course, we also have a special guest with us. And this week, it's the fabulous voice actor, Katie Flavin. Hi, Katie. Hello. Hello. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I was desperate to start talking about alliums then, but I was zipping my mouth. (laughs) Oh, do you like alliums too? I do. I love an allium. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can get really (laughs) massive ones. I've got some of those bulbs with the really massive ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Super exciting. I hope the badger doesn't dig them up and eat them. That's all I can oh, say. Oh, I hope does not too. A badger's partial to an alien they bulb. They are. Oh, I badgers didn't know badgers that. like all kinds of bulbs. Oh, um, no. And it, there's okay. nothing more soul destroying <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> than um, big holes that in your flower beds and no bulbs coming up. But um, yes, good luck with your alliums, Mark. <laughs> Thank I, you. I thoroughly approve. Now, Katie is a storyteller. She's a pro voiceover artist and a presenter, and she works mostly with corporate clients, telling their stories from her broadcast quality studio. She is a a trained broadcast journalist with a background in TV news. Indeed. Katie also loves narrating documentaries, working at live events as Voice of God, and of course, hosting her own podcast, Storytelling for Business. She's got two studio cats, Monkey and Pickle. And so, Katie, do you have a fun fact for us? I do. Yes, my fun fact, I don't don't quite know how fun it is, is um, (laughs) I've spent the night at London Zoo, not once, but (gasps) twice. (gasps) Um, Locked in. Uh, yeah, kind of. Um, the fir- the first time, they, I don't think they do this anymore. But it was in the in the um, bug house, yes. and we camped when my kids were really small next to the cockroaches, which uh, made me. Ooh. You know how when somebody just says the word nits, and your head feels all itchy for <laughs> yes. for the rest of the day. Well, thanks for that. Cockroaches have the same effect. <laughs> yes. Who knew? Yes. Um, and the second time was a lot more luxurious in their land of the lions, where you're in a little cabin oh. with an ensuite bathroom. But wow. um, but yeah, camping with the cockroaches is something um, I never want to do again. <laughs> yeah, I, I I have done that overnight, not next to the have cockroaches, you? but I have done it as well. And it, it's the most amazing experience. Yeah, it really, really is. is. I, I did it with my kids as well, and it was just fantastic and they they do they they get they take you for a midnight walk don't they mm, with and, and you get to see the animals actually <sighs> doing stuff whereas most of yeah. the time during the day they are asleep or hiding yeah um, it's really I fun. I love that. I kind of I'm, I'm desperate to do it myself <laughs> now. Not with the cockroaches obviously. <laughs> do the lions. The lions are epic. It's very so good. brilliant. <laughs> wow. Right then. Well, on that lionesque note, let's have a look at our first script of the show and ask how do you say that? How do you, do you say, say that? that? This is a carefully chosen script uh, oh. because of Katie, to be perfectly okay. honest. Okay, okay. And I had seen Katie's script. Yes. But this is a storytelling kind of business script. Yeah, it looks very corporate to me. Mm. It is. 
And of course, Katie is, as we've said, an expert in yes. storytelling in business. So I'm kind of expecting a masterclass here, Katie. <laughs> yeah, because it, 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 yeah, absolutely. No, no pressure on you, Katie. No, no um, but, not at all. Because <laughs> this, this, you know, in terms of the subject matter, this is fairly dull. Dry. Dry, I was thinking. Dry, yes, dry as a biscuit. Yes. yes. And what's interesting is, of course, we all have to, as, uh, you know, voiceovers, bring that element of yep. weaving a story into it. And mm. I think that it's one thing to bring storytelling into a story. Uh, and it's quite another thing to look at those storytelling elements and be able to pull them through, which is exactly what you presumably talk about on your podcast, Katie. Yeah. And how it's 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 possible to find the story in all kinds of things. But yes. you've, you've got to make something interesting and, and you've got to grab their attention. Otherwise, yeah. people are just going to switch off. Yeah, which is absolutely. a high risk with this script. Looking at it, yeah. it's true. But it's but it's interesting because, of course, they, they aren't necessarily written like that. But the reason they've employed a voiceover artist mm. is for entertainment value. After and all, and to bring it to life, mm -hmm. and to bring it to life. Yeah. So, although we might look at it and go, "Really," <laughs> it, it is our job, is it not, to you know, to, to kind of make, give it that kind of weave that you know that story. Yeah, the story, anything that we can get out of it, you know, bring it to life. So, uh, yes. I've got to go first, and this looks difficult. Yeah, well, it's not yeah, so much difficult. It's just re a bit repetitive. It's also been carefully chosen because this has got one, two, and there is a third, which I didn't Yes, include. number three isn't there, is it? It isn't there simply because um, it would have made it too long, and I thought, we've sat through enough. Yeah, so it's worth remembering that that... that end of two finishes on an upbeat because you're going into Absolutely, number three as opposed to finishing three. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, Precise. Indeed. Okay, okay. Well, I'll give it a go and see if I can get any kind of storytelling into it at all. I've noticed there are some quite long sentences, so there's a bit of breath control coming here as well. You I see, think. you've worried me about that because I never <laughs> noticed them okay. as long sentences and I'm now thinking, oh dear. I did I a bit of rehearsal it. and couldn't get through the entire sentence, so I just need oh, to breathe okay. better. I think that's how I noticed it. Right, okay, here we go. As companies strive to rely less on fossil raw materials, Carlton offers certification to track the use of alternative feedstock throughout the value chain to final products. Within the supply chain, companies have three options to manage certified alternative feedstock. 1. Physical segregation ensures that certified alternative feedstock and fossil raw materials are kept separate throughout the entire supply chain. 2. During controlled blending, Certified alternative feedstock and fossil raw materials are mixed. At all times, the physical content of certified alternative feedstock is known and monitored. This is, that is how exciting my voiceover <laughs> life gets. There's a very exciting bit where it says they're mixed. How exciting is that? No. It felt dry. I'm imagining um, a lovely animation of um, of separate feedstocks. I'm hoping so. And then a big, <laughs> a big thing pouring yes. the things together. I'm hoping um, there might be might be a lovely cow with big eyes. Yes. Re ready in the background, ready to have some there food. Were, there were mm. lots of cows in this particular one, <laughs> but uh, yes. It, it, uh, well, I I mean I think that you you took on board the idea that it was definitely more story than mm -hmm. corporate. I think. Yes. That repetition of that bloody <laughs> certified yes. alternative feedstock. Fossil raw materials. Absolutely on the edge of our seats with that. I, I'm afraid, Katie, it's your Is it my turn? Yes. Lucky lady. <laughs> okay. Certified alternative. Okay. So I'm just doing this as I would do it if yes. it was a real yes. thing. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Are you ready? I am yes. ready. As companies strive to rely less on fossil raw materials, Carlton offers certification to track the use of alternative feedstock throughout the value chain to final products. Within the supply chain, companies have three options to manage certified alternative feedstock. 1. Physical segregation ensures that certified alternative feedstock and fossil raw materials are kept separate throughout the entire supply chain. 2. During controlled blending, certified alternative feedstock and fossil raw materials are mixed. At all times, the physical content of certified alternative feedstock is known and monitored. I bow down. That was that was How exciting. Lovely. You yeah, see. Do you know what that was more exciting? And also, you made so much of our mixed in in yes. like number two. <laughs> I, I absolutely. And the other thing that I noticed as well, certification. You 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 landed on certification, but you were also quite a bit slower than me, and I think that brought out more story. 
I think you're right. And I think that this probably needed a little more measured tone because yeah. it's so complex um, in terms of following it because it's, you know, it is quite dry. I, I love the way you really lent it to physical, physical segregation. How yes. exciting is that, yes. everybody? <laughs> One, physical segregation. Mm -hmm. when, when I get a script like that, there's it, it's for me looking at it, It's it's got obvious kind of points to bring out so it says yeah. there's three options and then yeah. it goes one two and then there would be three yeah. so I yeah. would I would kind of focus on that in terms of my performance if you like and mm. then that the, I'd look at e within each thing the first one's talking about physical segregation and separate so those are kind of mm. key things and then the next one is blending and mixed and so yeah. it they're sort of the sentences are balanced in a way mm. um, and that help would help me to kind of get the momentum going yes. well we've talked about the seg segregation now we're going to talk about the blending sure. um i mean this is very dull what i'm saying but this is this is um <laughs> no but it's really important it's really important process. though yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely uh, sam well let's let's see what you did for the client then shall we oh, yeah, indeed <laughs> as companies strive to rely less on fossil raw materials carlton offer certification to track the use of alternative feedstock throughout the value chain to final products. Within the supply chain, companies have three options to manage certified alternative feedstock. 1. Physical segregation ensures that certified alternative feedstock and fossil raw materials are kept separate throughout the entire supply chain. 2. During controlled blending, Certified alternative feedstock and fossil raw materials are mixed. At all times, the physical content of certified alternative feedstock is known and monitored. I loved what, the way you said uh, during controlled blending, controlled. <laughs> as if it's some, as if there's uncontrolled blending happening over here somewhere. During control, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there's a risk for me now of having heard certified alternative feedstock just one time too many to now not yes. laugh whenever, um, whenever that is that is said. <laughs> Totally. You kept it quite light, Sam. You yes. almost ended with an upwards inflection on some of those sentences to to keep it light. I like that. It might get dull. I think that's the point. And, and mm. I have to keep reminding myself that entertain <laughs> jazz hands. Yeah. And you have to sometimes just entertain yourself, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> with whatever, <laughs> whatever is, material is available. Well, it's worthwhile remembering that these are real scripts that we've been working on, but we have changed the names and some of the details to avoid those pesky copyright issues. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, Katie, yes. you have brought in a script that is quite close to all of us and a lot of other voiceovers. Tell us a little mm. bit about it. So, I've brought in um, an extract from Alice Through the Looking Glass. Ah. And the reason that that fell into my inbox is because um, our voiceover colleague, Brad Shaw, is doing a big charity fundraiser audiobook mm -hmm. to raise money for Cancer Research UK. And bless his heart, he's just just um, had cancer for the third time and is cancer free. And mm. he wants to give something back. And I mean, I cannot think of a more massive undertaking than what he's doing, yes. which is Huge. chopping up Alice through the looking glass into one minute sections and then <laughs> dishing out those one minute sections. I think it's 175 yes, voiceovers. And then having to edit them together. I know. <laughs> I, know. I mean, I mean, well. Poor guy. Um, it it yeah. was his idea. So it's a labour so, of um, love, though, isn't totally, it? Totally, totally. Yeah. So I've brought in my minute. Um, yes. Okay. So yeah, that's what I've brought. I will put a link in the show notes to all of Brad's details and how you can give to the charity because the yes. charity is is there and the whole reason for doing the project is to raise money and uh, all of the voiceover artists that uh, have been chosen to do a minute have all donated as well. So if you're listening to this and you would like to donate, I will put all the details in the show notes. At this point, she's sitting in indoors mm -hmm. um, playing with the kittens. So um, it's nothing, nothing remarkable has happened yet. I assume that that first paragraph, she's almost thinking aloud. Alice talks out loud a lot. She talks a lot. I, I think she's talking to the kitten at this point. I think mm. she's talking out loud. Okay. Yeah, it, it sort of says a, a bit further down, she's talking more to herself than the kitten. But I think she's got an armful of, mm. of kitties and she's chatting to them. Yeah. And, um, and then um, the bit that we haven't got 
it goes a little bit more pensive and she starts looking out of the window and sort of mulling things over to herself. But I think at this mm. point she is she's talking to a very cute kitten. Yeah. Excellent. Well, let's let's hear Sam as Alice then, shall we? <clears throat> Number two. You pulled Snowdrop away by the tail just as I had put down the saucer of milk before her. What, you were thirsty, were you? How do you know she wasn't thirsty too? Now for number three. You unwound every bit of the worsted while I wasn't looking. That's three faults, Kitty, and you've not been punished for any of them yet. You know, I'm saving up all your punishments for Wednesday week. I suppose they'd saved up all my punishments she went on, talking more to herself than the kitten. What would they do at the end of a year? I should be sent to prison, I suppose, when the day came. Hmm, lovely. I think you were quite pointed towards those kittens. You were annoyed with them. (laughs) You were a bit cross. Yeah, a little bit cross came out there. Nice. What I got from that was um, a child kind of copying being told off by a parent, yes. taking that that telling off and, and doing it to the cuddly toy or doing it to the kitten. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Really nice. Oh, sweet. It's a nice little piece. Oh, it's it really is. nice. But it's, it's, it's got its challenges, hasn't it? Because you've got to become Alice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yes. and Which may be slightly easier for you than me. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. You could be Alec. But... <laughs> I'll be Alice. I don't mind. It's all. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> well, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. Let's see. Number two, you pulled Snowdrop away by the tail just as I'd put down the saucer of milk before her. What you were thirsty, were you? How do you know she wasn't thirsty too? Oh, now for number three, you unwound every bit of the worsted while I wasn't looking. That's three faults, Kitty, and you've not been punished for any of them yet. You know, I'm saving up all your punishments for Wednesday week. Hmm, Suppose they'd saved up all my punishments, she went on, talking more to herself than the kitten. What would they do at the end of a year? I should be sent to prison, I suppose, when the day came. Nice pacing. Mm. You chose not to uh, vocalise Alice differently from how you vocalised the narration part of it. And that was deliberate. It was deliberate. Yeah. It was de- it was deliberate. And I think if I had tried to put more of an Alice voice on, it probably wouldn't have worked. Because Alice is a female yeah. speaker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. No, but it was. It, but what I what I, I suppose what I was asking was it was a deliberate uh, de- decision on your behalf. Yeah. I think sometimes Katie um, Sam asks me these questions because she thinks I don't think about. <laughs> now you know that I know that's true <laughs> in the same way as you don't read things before you get into studio yes as you can always tell always tell that's a wing funny. and a prayer a wing and a prayer exactly. and, and do you know what the annoying thing Katie for Sam is that, that it works nine times out of ten no not always really annoying <laughs> I've come a cropper on a number of different occasions right Katie so what let's did you see do? what you to... did with it yes here you one Okay. Number two. You pulled Snowdrop away by the tail just as I had put down the saucer of milk before her. What? You were thirsty, were you? How do you know she wasn't thirsty too? Now, for number three. You unwound every bit of the worsted while I wasn't looking. That's three faults, Kitty. And you've not been punished for any of them yet. You know, I'm saving up all your punishments for Wednesday week. Hmm. Suppose they'd saved up all my punishments, she went on, talking more to herself than the kitten. What would they do at the end of a year? I should be sent to prison, I suppose, when the day came. Oh, I love that. I love that you that you were much kinder to the kitten than me. Yes, I think it was the complete opposite, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yes. I was I was a mean old Alice, but you were you were sweet to Kitty. Yeah, uh, to um to Snowdrop. You were pointing out that they'd done things wrong, but yeah. it was that you were in no way upset with them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, which I think is right actually in the context of the of the piece. I love a kitten. So just a reminder, we will put um, all of the details for Bradshaw's project. In the show notes, it's also worthwhile pointing out that Brad was oh something like episode ten of How Do You Say That, uh, and that is available in the in the library of episodes as well. The library. 
play How Do You Say That? Right, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on to the part of the show that mixes it all up, the wild card section. And let's see if the three of us can approach these scripts in a completely different way. Yes, indeed. Now, this week, Mark and I have been very much helped <laughs> by um, a listener, actress Lisa Day, who sent in a whole load yes. of wild card suggestions, which which was absolutely amazing for us to get because it's really, really tough to find new ones every single week. So thank surprisingly you, Surprisingly tough. And now we're on <laughs> episode really 41. Tough. Yes, it's surprisingly tough. Really tough. So, um, Katie, can yes. you pick one of the scripts and give Mark a new idea for it, a new motivation for it? Oh, be kind. I've got three written down here. Oh. One is a proper genre and two are kind of charactery ones. Yes, it, whatever you want to whatever do, you whatever, fancy. whatever you fancy giving me. Yes, basically. OK. Um, I've no idea. This is really horrible. Um, right, script one, <laughs> obvs. OK. Um, and I would like you to be doing this in the character of a, a, a posh girl school sports mistress, perhaps a lacrosse teacher. <laughs> Something Ooh. like that. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a chilly winter morning. Nobody wants to jog round the round the pitch. Um, you've got to motivate them, but with a bit of tough love in there as well. Oh, gosh, you've set the scene. It's almost impossible. So um, so I'm very sorry about that, but I cannot wait to hear what you do. Let me see in this character, right? Girls, girls. As companies strive to... You! Stop! As companies strive to rely less on fossil raw materials, Carlton offers certification to track the use of alternative feedstock, yes, alternative, through the value chain to final products. Now, within the supply chain, over there are the sticks. Companies have three options to manage certified alternative feedstock. You, girl, do that again and you will be inside. One, physical segregation. It ensures that certified alternative feedstock and fossil raw materials are kept separate through the entire supply chain. <laughs> Two, do not do that again. During controlled blending, certified alternative feedstock and fossil raw materials are mixed this time. At all times, the physical content... Don't laugh, it's physical content of certified alternative <laughs> feedstock is known and monitored. Calm down. <laughs> you weren't very nice, were you? I could see them in front of me and they were playing. You're a mean old across teacher. <laughs> Just do that again and you're inside. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> How did you feel? I, I felt myself in the character and I felt it was a cold day and I felt those girls being naughty in front of me. Like the little kitten. Let's not take that out of context, that line, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> so, okay. So, Katie, I, it's my, it falls on me yes. to give you a wild card. Ooh. Okay. So, I would like you to be desperately trying not to laugh when something has set you off. Like like a, at a really inappropriate, like as if you're at a funeral or something. Uh -huh. yes. So okay. I want you to be biting back the laughter, but it occasionally kind of, you know, spills over. <laughs> and I think... You have to choose, Sam. I know. I'm going to get to do <laughs> script number two. Yes, and not laugh. So uh, that's what I'd love to hear, Katie. I'd love you to hear that one. Yes. Okay. Good okay. luck. Okay, thanks. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Number two, you pulled Snowdrop away by the tail, just as Arya put down the saucer of milk before her. <clears throat> what, you were thirsty, were you? How do you know she wasn't thirsty? <laughs> two. <clears throat> oh, focus, focus. <clears throat> now for number three. You unwound every bit of the. <laughs> you unwound every bit of the. <laughs> you unwound every bit of the worsted while I wasn't looking. That's three faults, Kitty, and you've not been punished for any of them yet. You know I'm saving. <laughs> I'm saving up all your punishments for Wednesday week. 
Suppose they had saved up all my punishments, <laughs> she went on. <laughs> Talking more to us. <clears throat> Suppose they... <laughs> <laughs> Suppose they had saved up all, all my punishments, she went on, talking more to herself than the kitten. What would they do at the end of a year? I should be sent to prison, I suppose. <laughs> when the day came. <laughs> oh, I love it. The crescendo of laughter. That laughter. was bloody good. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm a bit hot now. It's interesting, isn't it? Because actually you find yourself, like yawning, you find yourself actually getting into wanting to laugh with it mm. yeah. as well. Mm. Not just playing the fact that you're trying not to laugh. It becomes funny that anyway. Well, it, there's nothing funnier than somebody getting the giggles, is there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, absolutely. If, if you can persuade yourself that some, that you are getting the giggles, then um, then it can just kind of escalate i think absolutely that was no, i thought I that was that. brilliant that was great <laughs> really absolutely good. we're often asked to put laughter into yes. things actually so it's a it's a it's a really good technique to be able to to, to actually do it as well i thought mm. that was lovely the worst thing is if you have a line that says um chuckle slightly or yes. something like that and then you I have, have one to of kind of today mm. Mm, and you have to just sort of think about how how that would really feel, yes, um, or how that would really come about, rather than just doing it to order. It's yeah. quite, it's quite a different mind shift. Let's find a wild card for Sam, and uh, I'm going to go with one of the ones that uh, Lisa sent to us. Um, it's one that I fancied having a go at, but I'm going to give it to you, Sam. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like you to do script one, so the dry script. Yes. Like you've just eaten something really hot, and your mouth is. Okay. Burning. Okay. It hurts. Oh, that's such okay. a good world card. Uh, isn't it? Uh, oh. <laughs> As companies that strive to rely less on fossil war materials, Carlton offers certification to track the use of alternative feedstock throughout the value chain to final products. <gasps> oh. Within the supply chain, companies have Three options to manage certified alternative feedstock. Oh, one. Oh, oh, it's hot. Sorry. Certified segregation ensures that certified alternative feedstock and fossil raw materials are kept separate throughout the entire value chain. <laughs> Two. During control blending. Certified alternative feedstock and fossil raw materials are mixed at all times. The physical content of certified alternative feedstock is known and... Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry, Monit. <laughs> <laughs> that felt painful. It, <laughs> it did. Felt, yes, you could, you could tell that your mouth was in pain there. Gosh. <sighs> Not good. I, I almost wanted to go spit it out, spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. There was a great thing you did as well. You were talking as you were breathing in. <laughs> yes. I, I don't quite know what you did, but it was brilliant. <laughs> yes, yeah, mm. totally that. Mm. Clever, clever. Well, all the scripts are in the show notes, listeners. So why not have a go for fun in the comfort of your own booth? Yeah, good idea. And please keep sending in or sharing your ideas for Wildcards. We love you, Lisa Day. Thank you we for sending do. them in. Uh, <laughs> we would love to hear from you about what you think uh, would be a good Wildcard. Either yes. DM us on Instagram at HDYST Podcast or email us at podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk. Yes. And now it is question time. And our question this week, because of Katie, actually, because what is the best storytelling technique, in your opinion, that you can use for any kind of narration? Oh. What's the thing that you bring if you if you could say, just remember to do this one thing? What physicality you bring when you're at the mic mm. is actually really important. You need to know what it is they want to achieve, who you're talking to, who the audience is. It's up to you to kind of channel it in a way that's easy and accessible for them to absorb it and take on that message and ideally kind of obey the call to action. Hmm. A lot of the time, it's much more intimate. It's much more kind of snuggled in on the mic almost and really speaking one-to-one -to, -one to hmm. the person that is listening. It's not very often that the things that we do, unless it's a movie trailer or something, are broadcast to a massive room of people. True. 
it's mm. normally somebody's watching on their phone or somebody's listening yeah. in their headphones yeah. and and that's a bit more intimate so i think mm. it's not really a storytelling technique but it's something you have to think about the person you're talking to and what are they doing where are they what do they want to hear the physicality obviously is really important when i do santa and i'm asked to do some odd corporate scripts as santa at this time of year i was <laughs> doing one last week but the santa character has his own physicality in the studio and it brings a very different feel to if i was doing a straight corporate read do you ever put um costume on for being no, for doing characters never do no i have bells sometimes in my hand have sleigh bells sometimes in my hand and we'll do that live but no 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 costume no no it's all in my head okay and and the change of stance to become a much bigger gruffer Mm. bolder person Mm. so Mm. would you say that the physicality that you bring to all of your reads if you like and they're all it'll all be different physicality obviously is possibly the thing that makes the difference i think it has to be yeah yeah. yeah, I would say so too. For me, in terms of bringing storytelling to it, funnily enough, it is remembering that it's all telling a story. And actually, that simple thing to remind yes. myself yes. that, yep. yes, they've called it a corporate script. Yes, they've called it an explainer. Yes, they've called it a, a promo. But in the end, what are we trying to do? We're trying to tell a story to somebody and and actually just the simple memory of actually yeah. holding that in my mind makes a big difference to me. I have a little blue, blue kind of blob creature, cuddly toy thing in my booth. I wondered where you were going with that, Katie, just for a moment. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know what he's called, but he's in Uh my booth and he looks at me or I look at him when Mm. I'm recording. He's he's right next to my monitor right now. He's your audience, is is he? He's my audience. So I talk to him and I also have um, photographs stuck up on the wall of people. And I also have a list Mm. of people as well. The, the list of people are people in my life and who I kind of hardly know. And there's like the miserable man in the village shop and stuff on this list. And I'm thinking, which of these people am I talking to? Yes, because it will be a very different voice that you use to the nasty man in the shop to your favourite aunt. Absolutely right. Yep. Oh, Katie, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, Katie Flamman is phenomenal. And a reminder that all of her details can be found in the show notes. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've loved it. I'm I'm a bit sad it's finished. I wanted to do loads more scripts in loads more crazy ways. (laughs) Oh, well, we'll also be putting uh, today's scripts in the show notes so you guys can have a read yourself. And if you enjoy listening, we'd love you to write a review on Apple Podcasts if you would, if you've got five minutes. Thank you again, Katie. That is it for this week. (laughs) And we will be back again next week with more scripts and another voiceover guest where we will be asking, all together now, guys, when we will be asking... (sighs) How How do you you say say that? that? How do you say that?